Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about how to easily make isometric movements inside of After Effects. All right, so this week we're gonna be talking about making isometric movements inside of After Effects. Obviously by default we have an X, Y, and Z, but they're in the wrong planes. Well, not exactly, but they're the axes are different. We can't really skew them or anything like that. This week's tutorial is pretty simple because we're just gonna be moving things on these axes. But if you want more information about how everything in here is built, you can get our project file off our website for a dollar. So let's take a look at how to do that. So I've built a control that if we click on this computer layer and we hide all these lines here, we can move this thing, it's called ISO push. I built a pseudo effect for it, but you could build these out of just sliders for each one of these components, X, Y, and Z. And as you can see, if I move this in Z, we're gonna move it this way. I set it this way because I believe most 3D programs define Z as being in this axis, so that's why it's that way. X will move front and back, and Y will of course move it in Y. So to determine how we're gonna move these objects in our isometric projection, we're basically just gonna add these vectors together. So let's talk about adding vectors. We're gonna have three different movements in here because we have those three sliders, X, Y, and Z. So a vector is basically a direction and a magnitude. So obviously the direction is an angle, and the magnitude is basically how far in that direction the vector extends. So we have these three sliders that will be the magnitude that we're moving in each direction. Each one of these things is associated with a particular angle in isometric projection, and the magnitude will be the slider's value. So the easiest way to add them is to start with one vector and then start the next vector at the end of the first one, and then so on. So we're gonna add the Y component to this Z, and we're gonna end up here, and then we're gonna add the X component in, and we're gonna end up over here. So our final vector will basically be the resultant composite of those three, which will look like this. It doesn't matter what order you add this in because obviously you can see that if we started and went here from the first one and then we just started to go in X this direction and then we went up in our Y, we'd end up at the same spot. So the extra cool thing about this is that you can think of this kind of as adding the points in the Cartesian plane as well. So if this is some point as defined in our 2D space and we end up over here, and then we also have a point over here, we can add these things together to also figure out the point where we're gonna be. So it doesn't really matter what space you're in. It just happens that we're gonna do all of our calculations in isometric angles. So let's go check out the code and you'll see what I mean. So we already have it up in Expressionist and it's pretty simple. We're just gonna take an angle and our magnitude is just gonna be the amount from these sliders. And we're gonna use those things to calculate points. Then we're gonna just add all of those points to the original value so that you can basically take this, move it over here and then still move it in those angles which is super useful because you can still do layout without having to drag a bunch of sliders around. So we have our function and it's gonna to set to return us an X and Y point. So we're gonna return math.cosine and then we're gonna take our angle because I didn't feel like calculating these all out in pi. We're gonna set degrees to radians with our input angle that we're gonna give it and then we're gonna multiply that by our magnitude. And we're gonna take math.sine, which is gonna give us the Y component. We're gonna take degrees to radians of angle, same way as before and multiply that by the magnitude. So what's cool about this is that this basically treats it like the angle is from the origin point. So that's gonna give us an offset that we can add to our value at the end. So we're not starting with After Effects' 960, 540, or whatever origin point that we have. So you can see we put the function at the top now because of the way After Effects' new JavaScript engine works. So nothing actually happens there until we actually call it later on. So the next part, we're gonna bring our controllers in. We're gonna have X set to the effect ISO push X. And again, if you're using sliders, this will be effect slider and whatever you name the slider, hopefully X. I have this comment that this is gonna be 30, and this is gonna be zero, and that's gonna be negative 30, and those are the angles that we're gonna be using. So then to get our X offset, so our X vector, we're gonna do get point, 30 degrees, comma X. So again, X is the magnitude at that point, so whatever the slider is set to. The same thing goes for Y, except we're gonna pass it 90 degrees instead, and then Z, we're gonna pass it negative 30 degrees. So that gets us three different points, that we're then gonna add to our value. So we have value plus X plus Y plus Z, and that's it. And really, that that's all it is. So it's pretty simple. But if you're gonna do a lot of things that are isometric, like the project that I'm about to work on, that will be a game changer in terms of animation. Because now you can do things easily, like we previewed before. Where that would be a huge pain if you wanted it to be exact. And if you're doing something with a grid, so you have an actual isometric grid, like the one that we threw in here, you would be screwed if you're trying to make that work and the things don't line up and all that kind of stuff. It's just gonna be noticeable if things start to move a lot. Or maybe you're just like me and you really want it to be perfect. Either way, 
this is a really good way to do it. So other than a bit of basic geometry, that was pretty easy, I would hope. Anyway, um, I hope you guys can find a good use for this. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.